All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're all having a great day. I'm all juiced up. I'm pumped, as I imagine you guys are, because baseball is back. The lockout is finally over after waiting. You guys know the deal. It was absolute hell for a few months, but I'm putting all that in the rear view. It's time to get ready for the 2022 season, and what we're doing today is an off-season blueprint or a post-lockout blueprint moves the Yankees have to make. So without any uh, further ado, let's get right into it. Drop a like on this video if you enjoy it. Subscribe if you are new. Uh, yeah, first order of business. I've been saying it all offseason. You guys know the deal. Shortstop is a top priority. The Yankees cannot go into the season with Anderson Simmons as their starting shortstop, especially when there's two premier talents available via free agency. All they cost is money. Obviously talking about Carlos Correa and Trevor Story. Now, I would love if the Yankees signed Correa. I would love if they signed Story. Realistically, I don't see them, you know, Correa is going to get a bag. He's going to get probably 10 years, $350 million, something in that range. He's going to get more than Corey Seager, that's for sure. So, I'm gonna. I, I'm hoping for Trevor Story. I really am. The dude, yeah, had the worst year of his career in 2021, but it was still a four-plus WAR season. He plays really solid defense. He would probably instantly, at least, tie with Aaron Judge, become the most athletic player on the team. All from three years, high AAV, like 33 million dollars a year. A three-year, $100 million deal with an opt-out after one. This way, he can opt out, reset the market, and test his value again, right? And that works out perfectly for the Yankees' whole stopgap plan. Maybe Anthony Volpe's ready by then. All right, there you go. Then you have your young shortstop of the future. And two, if he doesn't opt out, you only have him for three years. And if you have to go the fourth year to get the deal done, shortstops are the most athletic and versatile players in baseball. They can move positions, whether that's Story going to third base or second base. There was talk last year, the Yankees tried to get Story to play center field. So... It's not like he's locked down at short, and if you rather him play there, then you could always, you know, with Anthony Volpe, have him move to second base or third base down the line. So that's first order business. Get a shortstop, sign Trevor Story to a three or four year deal with an opt out after one. Next move, trade Oswald Peraza, who is the Yankees' other top shortstop prospect, and he's no joke. He's legit as hell. You know, it's kind of a coin flip between Volpe and Peraza, who's the number one guy. To me, it's easy, Volpe. Trade Oswald Peraza for Matt Olson. Now, the Yankees have a first baseman currently on the roster. That's obviously Luke Voigt. He's not going to be around. At least I would bet my entire bank account, which isn't all that much, but I would bet my entire bank account Luke Voigt will not be a Yankee come opening day. So they need a first baseman. They've already made it clear DJ LeMahieu is not going to be the guy consistently, at least on an everyday basis. So, you know, Oakland's having a fire sale. Go out and get Matt Olson. He's a left-handed bat. Had a great year last year. Hit 39 homers. His swing would play perfectly in Yankee Stadium. And giving up Peraza doesn't hurt all that much because you have Volpe. And hopefully you have Story or Correa, another shortstop, right? So acquire Matt Olson from the A's. And this leads me into my next one, which is acquire a number three starter. Now, this one I know is pretty generic. You can either go with Carlos Rodon or... The A's, they have so many starting pitchers that are going to be available. You know, like I said, they're having a fire sale. So in the same deal with getting Matt Olson, this would cost a lot of prospect capital. Don't get me wrong. But in the same deal with Matt Olson, maybe, you know, you could get Frankie Montas or you can get Sean Manaya or Chris Bassett. Any of those three I would take. There's, you know, talk about a fire sale with Oakland. They also have Ramon Laureano in center field. You know, that would be possibly an option as well. So if I had a, if I was a betting man, I would say I see the Yankees getting two players from Oakland. One of them hopefully being Matt Olson, and then if not from Oakland, they got to get a number three starter that way. And we're gonna, you know, we'll get into the rotation in just a second overall. Number four, decline Brett Gardner's option. I'm a big Gardy fan. I think one day he'll actually be in in Monument Park. Not that his number's gonna get retired, no, but uh, I think he will get some sort of recognition. I think you know we're just at that point where Gardy, he's. It's not even much to do with how he's not the same guy that he used to be, which obviously he's not. But, you know, he's 38 years old. Just time to get some some new faces in the clubhouse. If the Yankees had won, you know, a World Series or two in the last, you know, during this core, then all right, you just give him a gold watch and bring him back. But, you know, we're trying to win a World Series here. You got to construct the best roster possible. And I just don't see Brett Gardner, 38-year-old Brett Gardner, being a part of that. All right, so the lineup with my two accusations in it, Matt Olson and Trevor Story, here's what it would look like. And I think you guys are going to like it. It's balanced, it's powerful, and it's very, it's not all or nothing, at least not as much in the past. DJ LeMahieu leading off playing third, Aaron Judge batting second playing right, Matt Olson playing first and batting third, Giancarlo Stanton DHing and batting fourth, Trevor Story batting fifth playing short, Joey Gallo playing left batting sixth, Glaver Torres batting seventh and playing second base, Gary Sanchez batting eighth and catching, and Aaron Hicks at center field. Now, for this, the big thing that I see right away, and I'll put it on the screen here, look at the balance. You got Matt Olson splitting up Judge and Stanton in the middle. You got Joey Gallo, who's a lefty, 
splitting up Story and Glaber Torres. And then rounding things out at the number nine spot, you have Aaron Hicks, who's a switch hitter. So it's a much more balanced lineup. And overall, it's just deeper. Now, I know every lineup before opening day looks deep as hell. But I got to say, this is probably, out of all the lineups that, you know, we've had throughout this Yankees core, what I'm looking at right now, at least, is would be my favorite. The pitching rotation, you got Cole, Severino, and then hopefully a number three starter. That pushes Jordan Montgomery back to being your number four. And then James and would be your number five. Nestor Cortez is your swingman. That's a great rotation. I'm not going to get into it here, but I've gone on at length saying how the Yankees pitching staff is ridiculously underrated. The pitching rotation is really solid and will be even better if they get another starter. And their bullpen is a top two, top three bullpen in the American League. They're set up really well, guys, and that's why I'm excited. I really am. If they make the right moves, and it's not like they got to make five or six moves. You just got to make two to three impact moves. Get two impact bats, and then hopefully one more starter. And guys, we're looking pretty. Uh, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Let me know how excited you are for the new season. I know I am, personally. It's going to be a dope year of, you know, everyday content. The game highlights will obviously be coming back, starting out with uh, spring training games, whenever those get going. Uh, but, yeah, that's going to do it for this video, guys. I'll see you guys next time. Let's go, Yankees.